So today we're going to look at how to break a force into its components. And when I say components, I mean the horizontal and vertical parts of what makes up each force. Now you should recognize this from two things. The first is uh, last unit we added vectors graphically. And if you add f sub x with f sub y, how would you do that graphically? Well, you'd lay them out and then put them end to end. And you see that the resultant vector um, is indeed this force. So really, we're just going the other way. So if I have this force, I know that I can break it into this plus this because that is the same as this one. And we've also talked before about how horizontal forces and vertical forces are actually separate from each other. They're independent of each other. Um, vertical motion does not affect horizontal motion. So lucky for us, vertical up and down is always going to be perpendicular to the horizontal, which means perpendicular, that means we're going to have a uh, right angle. So we know that this is a right angle here, 90 degrees. That makes this here a right triangle. That's very helpful because we know all sorts of things about right triangles. So it's going to be easy for us um, to break this hypotenuse into um, its two components. So it has this picture has these drawn in here. This is um, F sub X and F sub Y here, the vertical and the horizontal components. It would have been just as appropriate for me to um, draw them in like this as F sub Y and this as F sub X. And you can see these result in the same thing. This is the same as this, this is the same as this, and the resultant vector is the same. So it doesn't matter whether you draw it up and over or over and up, uh, both it will work out to be the same. The only difference is your ratios. So depending on whether you draw it up and over or over and up, um, it's going to affect your trig ratios. And we use these trig ratios because we have a right triangle. And like I said before, it's, it's beneficial that we have a right triangle because we it sets up these ratios so we can actually find the sides. Maybe you've seen this in your uh, math class. It will help you out if you have. If you haven't, that's fine. It's not too bad. You can remember so ka toa. So is short for the sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. Ka is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And toa tangent is opposite over adjacent. We're not going to be using tangent um, in this case. So you don't even have to worry about that. Just so and ka. That's fine. Um, and when we say opposite and adjacent, we're specifically talking about the angle you're looking at. So uh, if, if this is my angle here, this is the Greek theta. If that's my angle here, then the opposite is the one that's directly across from it. This one, if you follow straight across, that's the opposite. Adjacent, uh, if you haven't heard that word before, that just means next to. So that's the one that's next to. Directly adjacent, directly next to. Um, and a hypotenuse. Hopefully you've heard that word before. That's the longest side, the one that's across from the right angle. The hypotenuse being the longest side here. So when we're talking angle, straight across is the opposite. Right next to is adjacent. So if I had chosen this angle, we'll call that alpha, then this guy would be the opposite and this guy would be the adjacent. So when I talked about whether or not you draw it over and up and up or up and over, that's just going to affect which uh, one of the angles you're looking at. So it's going to affect which side's the opposite and which side's the adjacent. But that's it. Everything else is the same. So let's look. So if this is my force, and let's say it tells me that uh, it tells me this angle. So let's say I've, you know, I have some force of magnitude F that's going off at this angle. I can break that into F sub Y and F sub X. If I want to find F sub Y, then that is my opposite side. It's the one that's straight across. So um, the one that uses opposite is sine. Remember, so... Uh, so means that the sine of your angle is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. 
In this case, the opposite is just uh, your f sub y, and the hypotenuse is f. To solve for this guy, we can multiply both sides by f, and you see these cancel out, and f sub y is just going to be sine of theta times f. So we take the magnitude here and multiply it by the sine of the angle. Very, very similarly, if I want to find f sub x, that is the adjacent side. So the one that uses the adjacent is uh, cosine, because we know cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is the one that's right next to it, so that's f sub x over the hypotenuse, which is the original force, the magnitude of the original force. So again, just like last time, we're going to multiply by the force, and we know that f sub x is going to be the force times the cosine of the angle. Okay, that's not too bad. Not too bad. If we were looking at this one, though, say I went up and over, it's the same thing, except now this is your opposite, and this is your adjacent. So all that's going to happen is you're going to switch these. Um, you're going to flip which ones you use. So if I want to find the adjacent, i got to use cosine. So this time, f sub y is going to be f times the cosine. And this time, since f of sub x is the opposite, it's going to be f times the sine of theta. And that happens because this is going to be a different angle. right? If I drew this in, excuse the not straightness of it, if I drew this in, this angle is going to be different than this angle. This one, different than this one. And that's the only reason that these flip. You got different ratios because you're using different angles. But that's the only thing that's different. You're going to flip these. Just know you're looking for the opposite one or you're looking for the adjacent one. Which one are you going to use? Let's do one example here. So you can see I have a force here. Magnitude 15 newtons. And since a force is a vector, we have a direction as well. And we know the direction because it's given us these angles here based off the origin right here. So I have a magnitude of 15, and I have a direction. So if I want to break this into components, there's two things I have to do. The first is I have to draw in the components themselves. So I can break this into a horizontal component that looks like this, and a vertical component that looks like this. I'll label them f sub x and f sub y. I forgot to mention, but hopefully you have picked up on it. This is f sub y because we're talking the y axis up and down. This is f sub x because we're talking the x axis left and right, just like in math. So since I drew these, I'm going to be using this angle, this angle. So uh, which one is the opposite side from this angle? That would be f sub y. If f sub y is the opposite, that means so, right, we're going to use the opposite side, so we're going to use sine. That means f sub y is going to be the force times the sine of the angle. So I know those things. 15 is the magnitude of the force, Sine of the angle we use is 37. You can type this straight into a calculator. There's a sign button if you have a graphing calculator. Just type it straight in. And that's about 9.03 newtons. So I would have a force, a downward force of 9.03 newtons. What about my horizontal force? Well, you know that this is the adjacent side, so we're using cosine. So f sub x is going to be the force times the cosine of theta, which we know is 15 times the cosine of 37. 
Okay, type that in your calculator. And that's about 11.98 newtons. We're talking forces, remember we're talking forces. So we have 11.98 newtons this way and 9.03 newtons down. Now, you could have, if you wanted to, draw your vertical force this way, F sub Y, and your horizontal force this way, F sub X. It would have been the same thing, except now you're using this angle. You're now using this angle, and F sub X will be the opposite, so that would be using the sine. And F sub Y would be the adjacent, so that would be using the cosine. It would be the exact same process, except you now have different opposites and adjacents. That's the only difference, but same process. Set them up using the ratios, and then you can just plug it into your calculator and solve from there.